I bought the smallest OLED TV in the world, and I'm going to see if you can use it as a computer monitor. I've created the perfect setup for this test. This monster gaming PC costs over $6,000, and inside there is an RTX 3090 Ti, the most powerful graphics card in the world, so we can push this LG TV to its limits. Since 2020, the use of LG OLED TVs as PC monitors has seen a huge surge in popularity. This is thanks to the insane specifications of the 4K panel as well as support for HDMI 2.1, Nvidia's new graphics cards within the 30 series and also next generation gaming consoles like the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X all support HDMI 2.1 for 4K 120fps gameplay. And over the last two years, LG's OLED range has quickly become some of the best gaming TVs that you can buy whilst being fairly priced, starting at around $1,000. With the LG C2s, the stakes have been raised, with promises of brighter screens thanks to the Evo panels. But also the prices have been increased, with the 42-inch starting at $1,399, which is the same price as the larger 48-inch. So with increased prices comes increased expectations, and there's a lot of hype riding on the new 2022 range. And if LG get this wrong, they could lose the mantle of being the best gaming TVs. First, let's Let's discuss the gaming. Honestly, this experience is so good. Having previously used a CX 55 inch and an A1 48 inch as my PC monitor, the 42 inch is a much more comfortable size to use on your desk when gaming. The smaller size lets you see the entire screen without needing to sit really far back or move your head around to see elements on the hood and the minimaps. The support for variable refresh rate with both AMD FreeSync and also Nvidia G-Sync means PC gamers, no matter whether they're Team Red or Team Green, can enjoy perfectly smooth high refresh rate gaming. In addition, the impressive response time and input lag of these OLED panels helps mouse movement feel instantaneous. One of my favorite games that I tested was Halo Infinite. With all of the PC graphics settings cranked up in this title, it looked absolutely insane, and 4K 120fps was not even a sweat for my gaming PC. However, what was particularly special about this game was HDR. As the LG C2 is a HDR TV, you can play your video games in HDR, and this just doesn't give you a brighter and more vibrant image it has more detail and color information in the shadows and highlights, providing much better clarity on the darker maps inside of Halo Infinite, making it much easier to see enemies and dominate in the lobbies. Furthermore, as this is a HDR TV, the peak brightness is significantly higher than that of a HDR monitor. I believe it's around 750 nits on the LG C2 for the 42 inch model and on some HDR monitors that I've tested in the past that have HDMI 2.1, I believe they were around sort of 400 nits, so significantly lower in terms of the max screen brightness. I genuinely cannot fault the LG C2 for 4K gaming. This is easily one of the best displays you could get as your monitor. However, there are some issues within Game Optimizer that I will mention in a moment. But first, let's focus on productivity and what it's like to work, browse the internet, write emails, etc. on this display. This is where the weaknesses do begin to arise. A known problem and complaint from previous users of LG OLEDs is the screen dimming. So basically what happens here is if you have applications open with like a solid white background, like black text on a white background inside of a Word document, what will happen over the duration of you working inside of that program, the screen will just gradually decrease its overall brightness to a point where it will have gone from like full peak brightness to like 50% and it's significantly dimmer the screen that you're working on. Then as soon as you move your mouse and move windows around the screen, it will suddenly re-trigger back to full brightness. It's almost like the television thinks it's going to sleep because not much motion's happening on the screen because you're just typing words inside of a Word document. And then finally, it will come back to life once you move an object like a picture or an application in tile inside of your computer. It will go back to uh, full brightness because it thinks it's uh, being used again. I think it's just almost like an auto dimming feature to prevent burning of just stagnant images on the screen. Now, I must admit that on other OLED TVs that I have used in the past, I never really noticed this and it did not bother me one bit. However, with the smaller 42 inch model, I noticed it happening way more frequently and it was incredibly irritating to use. However, I did not notice this dimming issue in any other application and it is within other applications where this TV absolutely dominates. If you are a video editor, graphic designer, or just appreciate things looking good, the color accuracy from OLED is unmatched. This gives you huge confidence when editing photographs or color grading video clips. You can notice subtle details in the colors, like when the white balance is a little bit off or the green and the magenta in the skin tones aren't quite correct, and you can really fine tune and tweak the image 
to an extent and degree that I've never been able to do on any other pan. There genuinely is nothing quite like it, and the 1 million to 1 contrast ratio gives you perfect black levels. Now my experience with the LG C2 definitely has been far from perfect. As I mentioned in my full review video, I have had some random screen flickering issues when using my Windows PC, and I've continued to investigate this further, and I now feel like it has something to do with G-Sync. When I've turned G-Sync off, it seems to have not fixed the problem, but prevented it from happening. And I'm sure if Nvidia release future drivers or LG release future firmware, this issue will be completely resolved. Also further issues have been with the design of the television. Using the television on the pre-provided feed isn't ideal when you're using it as a computer monitor because you can't get it at the right height. You have to look down at it all of the time and it hurts your neck a little bit. Now you could get yourself like a desk shelf to resolve this issue perfectly fine. But if you're hoping to put it on a monitor arm, which is you know the most aesthetically pleasing and convenient solution, you do have to be aware that obviously there isn't any VESA mount holes at the rear of the panel, which requires you to then purchase TV brackets, a VESA mount adapter plate, which sounds pretty simple, but when you actually try and look for these on the internet, they're quite difficult to find. In addition, you also have to buy an incredibly overpriced monitor arm in order to support the weight of the television. So expect to spend a further $300 to $500 just to get this television more comfortable within your desk setup. And finally, probably one of the most disappointing features on the LG C2 has been the widescreen feature. Inside of Game Optimizer, you can change the aspect ratio of the LG C2 from basically 16 by 9 to 32 by 9 or whatever to create an ultra wide monitor emulation. And on the surface, this feature looks really cool, but after further testing of it, it has a lot of problems. First, it is a bit clunky and a nightmare to turn on having to jump into the Game Optimizer, but there is a huge drop in the image quality and image resolution. This isn't like a 1440p ultra wide monitor mode or even like sort of like a 4K ultra wide monitor mode. You are dropping down from a 4K TV down to a 1080p ultra wide monitor. And to be honest, it's quite an unpleasant gaming experience because it looks so terrible compared to the 4K you were previously gaming within. Also, I noticed that HDR wasn't working correctly inside of this aspect ratio mode. As soon as you would turn widescreen gaming on, HDR would turn off and the image brightness would significantly drop. And then as soon as you would disable this aspect ratio mode, HDR would re-enable itself and then your, your screen would become nice and bright and really pretty to look at again. So overall, pretty disappointing feature that everyone was looking forward to, which is sort of the common story about this LG C2 because things like multi-view don't even work as well. One final thing that I do want to discuss is the possibility of encountering burn-in when using an OLED as a computer monitor. Now I've owned the LG CX behind me here for over two years now and I used it for 12 months straight as a computer monitor and I now use it every single day for playing video games and I have experienced zero burning on that old LG CX over there. And to be honest, with all of the new safety features like pixel refresh, pixel movement or whatever, where they like move around the screen and some of the OLED care features that have been added to the C2, I really don't think there's too much to worry about. It just all comes down to common sense and managing your panel correctly. If you want to learn more about the panel inside of this LG C2 OLED TV and how LG has actually been lying about the quality of panels that people have been receiving, you should definitely check out this video next to make sure that you're not getting scammed.